Good morning, everyone. That's always what you're supposed to do. Place your cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. You live for God, live for God. You know, we got an enemy out there, people. And he's been sowing tares in the harvest for decades, centuries even. You have to be careful out there. You know, and as always, put your cross on first. Let's make it started. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You have to remember, the enemy has been sowing tares in the harvest for years. You'll be surprised how many non-believers like, there were people just like Jesus, been around since the Egyptian days and all this and that. So many stories that mimic the coming of the Christ. Mm. So many. And they've been floating around for a long time. This is nothing new. That's why some people are confused now. You know, but those tares are there. But if you are a true believer of God, true follower of Christ, one who's trying to keep the faith and keep the truth, he can't trick you. But anyway, people, let's read today from, my bad about that. Let's read today from the sowing the seed. Um, chapter 13 of Matthew. And this is one of my favorite scriptures. And <clears throat> it's my favorite for, for a number of reasons, but I just like it. It tells you some information in plain sight. But if you don't have discernment, if you, you can't ask God to reveal it to you, a lot of people just go over a lot of people's heads. Chapter 13 of Matthew. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat it, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun and sun when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirtyfold. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said to them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever have, to him shall be given. Now think about that as you read the word and study the word. For whosoever have, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. Don't think in regards to finances. For whosoever have not, from him shall be taken even away that which he hath. You heard the story about the, the silver pieces. One person got this many, one person got that many, one person got that many. And one person was like, I buried mine away. And the, the ruler was like, hey, take yours and give it to him because you didn't make no increase on it. You didn't bear no fruit. Therefore I speak out to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Why aren't a lot of people being converted? Because they don't want to 
hear it. They don't want to be saved. They don't want their eyes open. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then come up the wicked one. The devil is in the details. Then come up the wicked one, and catch up away that which was sown in his heart. This is that the which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into a stormy place is the same as he that heareth the word, and a nun with joy receiveth it. Yet have he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. But when tribulation or persecution arise because of the word, by and by he is offended. It is also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, and some sixty, some thirty. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Check this out. But while men slip his enemy, Slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Who is the enemy? But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the house builder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence have the tares? He said unto them, An enemy have done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay. Lest while you gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together unto the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I would say to the reapers, Gather ye together the first of the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Mm, ain't that amazing? The tares. Let me go over to starting with verse 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went to the house and his disciples came unto him saying, declare to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, he that sows the good seed is the son of man. Now think about that. God spread the good seed with the word of God. Right? And those who spread the good seed with him are of God. Those who don't, they ain't. Mm -hmm. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Pay attention. He said, who are the tares? The children of the wicked one, children of the devil. You are of your father, the devil. Mm -hmm. Jesus said that a lot of times. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sold them is the devil. So he sold, the devil sold tares in people, I mean sold bad seed in people, and they spread it, and they tares now. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire that shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who have ears to hear, let them hear. Now you got to be careful. You can be listening to tears. You can be listening to the wrong type of teacher. The Bible talks about having discernment. It talks about testing the spirits to see if they're of God or not. But it's like we live in a world right now. Everybody wants to preach, and that's a good thing. A lot of people want to spread the word. But some people are not being spread, not spreading the word of God. They're spreading the word of the devil. That's why this day and age, people are like there are two Jesuses. But I'm not talking about the black Jesus and the white Jesus. 
It's a Jesus that the Bible talks about and a Jesus that the world talks about. It ain't really about color. And people have been arguing about that forever too. The genealogy of Jesus. God said, argue not about genealogy. All they do is render strife and division. Right? And you see black people and white people alike. Jesus is black. Jesus is white. God, Jesus told us not to worry about that. Why are people still worried about those same things? That's kind of weird to me. It's, and all these people read the same Bible. And out there still, still trying to argue about such trivial things. He said, I'm looking for those who are going to worship me in spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. And then he warns us about genealogy. Do genealogy. They got something to do with color and race. But you know, let's read from Acts today. You got to be careful out there, people. There's a lot of false teachers out there. It's a lot of people that hmm, are beguiling people, sorcerers, using the Kundalini spirit, even trying to get you to get in tune with the Kundalini spirit. Get, lead you to witchcraft, lead you to sorcery, lead you to all kind of things that are against the word of God. Let's go to chapter 8 of Acts. Starting with verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went every way preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people which one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voices came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies that were lame were healed. And there was a great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Now think about that. It's way back then. Ain't nothing new under the sun. To whom they gave all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. Now think about that. The filler would have never came there. They would have stayed being bewitched by this sorcerer named Simon. And there are many sorcerers in the world. Nobody likes to believe it. They think it's all mumbo jumbo. But it's in the Bible. And it's there for a reason. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. You'll be surprised how many people are under sorcery right now. Hmm. But when they believed Philip preaching, they received a good seed. The things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Ain't that amazing? I'm not going to read the rest of the story. Just to show you that sorcerers are abounding. Let's go to chapter 13 of Acts. Chapter 13. Now there were in, Ant in the church that was in Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that were called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manaim, which had been brought up and with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they're being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. They're parting into Cilicia, and from thence they said, sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also John to their minister. Mm. And when they had gone through the aisle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was 
Boy Jesus. Wow. Look at this imposter. But look closely. A certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew. <laughs> they didn't say he was something different. He was a child of Israel. He was Jewish too. <laughs> Tricking folks. Whose name was Boy Jesus. <laughs> Which was with the deputy of the country. Now think about wicked counselors. What the Bible tells you about having wicked counselors. Which was with the deputy of the country, Sargius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. Hmm. I will be found of them that seek me. But Alamas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, by Jesus also, withstood them, speaking to turn away the deputy from the faith. And it's the same way that goes around over here. You got people in your life. Why do you believe in Jesus? You know, most people think of sorcerers. Like I told you before, they got cauldrons and they got this and that. They are seducers. They are liars. That's what a sorcerer is. Then Saul, also is called Paul, filled the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. Watch what he says. And said, oh, full of all subtlety. And all mischief, thou child of the devil, <laughs> thou enemy of all righteousness, would thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? That's one thing they do. They pervert the truth. And my, now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being admonished at the doctrine of the Lord. See, there are a lot of people in your lives right now, people, that are seducers and liars and thieves. Anything to persuade you away from the Bible. Anything to keep you away from God. It's been around since the beginning. There have been witchcraft and suicide. If you read the children of Israel coming from Egypt and all the magicians and all this, this is nothing new. That's why every time you turn on the TV now, you see something about witchcraft and sorcery. <laughs> they say a lot of people in Hollywood are selling their soul to the devil. And I believe they are. The devil is bewitching them. Doing as they please. Doing as they want. But as you can see lately, a lot of people are being found out. They're being exposed. And the thing is, he said, best believe your sin will find you out. God is a good God. And he don't want his children to be tricked by sorcery or witchcraft. False doctrine. One thing when you have a, a somebody that teaches falsehood, they're gonna give you, they're gonna lead you, also lead you to something other than the Bible. And I know there's a lot of teachers out there that even spread everything. Read the book of Enoch. Been there, done that, stop that. <laughs> Try to read other books too. Been there, done that, stop that. Because the only book I need to lead people to is the Holy Bible. If they lead you to other books, even sometimes leading you to their own. <laughs> And there are books of doctors or devils. And I tell people all the time, I don't know how he talks to other people, but I know he told me to stick with the King James Version. Stick to it. All right. I stuck with it. And I'm going to stick to it, to it for as long as I can. You know, and that's the Bible I lead people to. I hate these different translations. I really do, man. The word be changing so much over each translation. It's like, wow, what in the world is going on? In China, they already... Changing the Bible. Seducers. Liars. You know, people, God loves us. He wants the best for us. He says, it's a good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But you got to want the kingdom. What he said about the soul, he said, they won't come to me. Let their sins be exposed. A lot of people, they got sin nature inside of them that they don't want to get rid of. They don't want to 
turn to God and have God cleanse them so they keep doing what they want to do. And normally when they keep doing what they want to do, they start inching towards things that allow them to do as they please. Let me pause and I will continue.